Then we do the cognitive techniques, where we work with people's worries and thoughts and how those serve them and how they don't and how reflective of reality they are and how much they need to be changed. I Thinking mean, about that negative Twitter comment yeah. or your you know, stress at work, you got deadlines mm -hmm. or yeah, all, all that those kind things. Of stuff. Are, so where are you going to send your child preschool? Mm, <laughs> big one, big one. I've had patients come in and their presenting problem has been, my daughter is majoring in English. I'm like, okay. You know, so you get you get every kind of reason for people saying that they okay, have. Okay, so how do you? What problems. do you do? I mean, how do you? That's hard to. It is do, deal with, isn't it? I yeah, mean, yeah. There's a bunch. When of I lay down, I mean, that's one of my problems. Is like that'll become active. It hasn't been active all day, but when yeah. I lay down at night, no. and it's. <laughs> you know, it, whatever we don't have time to deal with during the day, or whatever we choose not to deal with during the day. It's going to make an appearance at night. Yeah. It's going to come in and swoop and say, hello, here I am. Like, you get to deal with me now <laughs> when you want to be sleeping. So there's a number of different types of tools that we use to work with thoughts and feelings. Have you ever heard the thought, don't believe everything you think? Yes. It can be pretty dangerous. Right. So that comes to mind. Uh, working with thoughts, an initial way to think about um, these approaches is that we identify what we call dysfunctional thoughts. So thoughts that, you know, they're not really serving us, and also they're not super true. So for example, black and white thinking, right? If I don't nail this interview, my career is over, right? Like these complete black and whites. Um, we've also got personalization type things. Oh, that person left a negative comment in my Twitter. That must mean I am the worst presenter ever, right? So we, we can take these things. And then there's also my favorite, one of my fan favorites is shooting all over people or shooting all over yourself. I should be doing this, I should be doing that, I should have that done, right? So these kinds of thoughts. Whenever a thought falls into a particular category of dysfunctional thought, and I have a fun list that I can share with you of different types of these, chances are the thought is not all the way true. And we do an exercise called the thought record where we look at evidence for a thought, evidence that it's true, we look at evidence that it isn't true. And I mean, we really look. I have spent an hour at a time on one thought with a patient before, where we look for all of the possible evidence that it's true, all of the possible evidence that it's not true. And then we have to develop a new thought that acknowledges both the evidence that it is true and the evidence that it isn't true. Can you give an example? I sure can. Let's pick a flavor. Let's say, that you are having the thought, if I don't get a perfect night of sleep tonight, I am going to just bomb my presentation tomorrow. That's a horrible thing to be thinking about right when you're trying to go to sleep, right? Oh, I really need to sleep right now because I'm going to be terrible on this presentation tomorrow. Well, what is the evidence that it's true? Well, maybe this person has before not done great the night after a night of sleep. Oh, I've performed less bad after a night of sleep. Or I'm sorry, I performed. Yeah. yeah, I've performed <laughs> not as well as I usually did uh, do after a, a bad night of sleep. Or you know, I've gotten feedback that my talk wasn't so great after a bad night of sleep before. But then let's look at evidence that it isn't true. There have been plenty of times I've performed on a poor night of sleep. There was that time that I slept overnight at an airport on the way to a conference, and I still pulled off the talk, and it was fine. Right. So we have to look at evidence that it's not necessarily true. Also. I can't predict the future. I don't know if I'm going to sleep well tonight or not, right? I haven't decided. I don't know. And then what we do is we developed an adaptive thought, which is, well, although I haven't always performed my best on poor nights of sleep, there are plenty of times that I've done just well giving a talk after a poor night of sleep. And the key thing with this is that, is that adaptive thought just Pollyanna? No. But it's much more reflective of reality than if I don't get eight hours of sleep, I'm going to bomb this presentation, right? So we develop a thought that is much more reflective of reality, and then we evaluate how we feel. So for example, when you have the thought, I am going to bomb this presentation tomorrow if I don't get eight hours of sleep, how anxious do you feel on a scale from one to 10? Mm. Let's say it's like a nine. Yeah, pretty high. Presentation, yeah. Right, sure. But then if we have this other thought, if we adopt a new thought that says, I don't always perform my best after a poor night of sleep, but I've done it a bunch and it's gone fine. When we have that thought, our anxiety level on a one to 10 isn't like a nine, it might still be like a five or maybe a six, but it's not as high. So we're learning how to match the appropriate amount of the emotion 
the thought that is more reflective of reality.